In the same way, this uh, devotion, the path of devotion is being offered to us at concessional rates during this month of Karti. It's a very special opportunity for all of us. And naturally, we all like a bargain, isn't it? If there's a bargain, oh, it's a good bargain. So here we have a very special bargain, a bargain, how to develop Krishna Prima, how to get out from the wheel of birth and death. This opportunity is being given to everyone at this particular time during this month of Karti. We want to take advantage of this month to express our devotion that to develop a habit to remember Lord Krishna. We have many habits. You know, you have a habit, you wake up in the morning, take a bath, clean your teeth, all right? First we should clean the teeth, then take a bath, like that. You, we have habits, things which we will do every day. You have a habit to eat your breakfast or to eat your supper. They have habits. Maybe you listen, your habit is to listen to radio or watch television. We have these kind of habits. We want to develop a habit in relation to devotion to Krishna, in relation to consciousness of Krishna. We have to cultivate the habit to hear and to chant. Just like devotees, they will regularly chant the holy names of Krishna. And those who have taken initiation, who are practicing seriously the cultivation of spiritual life, they make a vow that they're going to chant the Hare Krishna mantra regularly, a fixed number of times. We have to make it a habit that you want to, you know, we wake up in the morning and many devotees also, they have an altar, you have an altar maybe in your own home and you will do arti, mango arti. You have arti in the morning. This is this, the kind of thing which becomes a habit. We want to try to cultivate this kind of habit. Of course, it will be different in different parts of the world. It's concentrated generally. You know, we do have a standard time for doing RT, but it, 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 it's different for people at home. You know, living at the home, you have to be considerate to the family members. You know, if you live in a building where there's many other people who are not devotees, you have to be a little conscious of what you do at four o'clock in the morning. You know, four o'clock in the morning, you don't want to be blowing conch shells, or banging the car tiles, and beating the drums. The neighbors will soon let you know you're not welcome, right? Not only the neighbors, even the other family members who are not devotees, they won't like it. So we do have to be considerate about these things. And don't be too fanatical, be thoughtful, and consider others. Uh, but we do like to develop the habit that we do these things. When you do them, what time you do them, that will vary for the individual. But you do want to have a habit that I'm going to chant 
just like when we are initiated into chant to become devotees, when we accept the initiation, the diksha, which is the process by which we become freed from sinful reactions and awaken spiritual knowledge, at that time, we make a vow to promise to chant a fixed number, 16, usually it's minimum of 16 rounds in a day. So that chanting is required. You have a, you made a vow, then you want to keep that vow. We have to make it a habit to do this chanting. We make a habit, just like devotees will be vegetarian. They don't eat non-vegetarian foodstuffs, meat, and fish, and eggs. We don't even like to eat things like onion and garlic. Although onion and garlic, are, you could say they're also vegetables, but they're of a nature which is not conducive to spiritual practice. They're very rajas. They increase the passion. We already have a lot of passion. We don't need more. Right? You take onion and garlic, you're just putting more oil on the fire. You build it, increasing the rajas. So a devotee has a habit. What? What is his food? What is his prescribed food? The same way we want to develop the habit to remember Krishna. The first thing, the first principle is to think of Krishna, to remember Krishna, that Krishna is my Lord, he is my master, I'm trying to be his devotee, trying to be a servant of Krishna. And during this month of Karti, we want to cultivate this kind of consciousness. And you can see the picture here, the illustration of Mother Yashoda tying up Lord Krishna. Now, maybe we will wonder certainly, what kind of devotee is this lady, Yashoda? She's supposed to be a devotee? And she's tying Krishna up. Is that devotee? Actually, yes, this is devotion. This is this is the effect of yoga maya. Maha Maya is forgetfulness of Krishna, thinking him to be an ordinary person. Mother Yashoda is under yoga maya. And she simply thinks of Krishna as her son. She doesn't think of Krishna as God, but although she does see different times, different events happen, which indicated that he was God, but Mother Yashoda will just forget about them. There's, and she, she can only think of Krishna as her son. Just like one day, Lord Balaram told Mother Yashoda, Krishna has been eat, eating dirt. So Mother Yashoda was concerned for her son. She called Krishna and she asked him, have you been eating dirt? And Lord Krishna said, no, mommy. Balaram is angry at me and he's telling tales about me. It's not true. So Mother Yashoda said, then open your mouth and let me see. So Lord Krishna opened his mouth and Mother Yashoda saw within the mouth of Krishna something very wonderful. She saw the whole universe within the mouth of Krishna. And she saw that she was also in the mouth of Krishna. She saw everything there within the mouth of Krishna. So when Mother Yashoda saw this, she just thought, oh, I must be seeing things. So she didn't think that Krishna is God. She thought something wrong with me. Anyway, close your mouth, Krishna. <laughs> Go away, be good. Don't fight with Bhavara like this. Mother Yashoda in, is the devotee of Lord Krishna. And she 
can only think of Krishna as a child. Although Krishna, Lord Krishna, is often revealing that he is the Supreme Lord. Because remember, even as a little baby, the witch Putana had come. Putana was a big rakshasi, and she came there to kill Lord Krishna. And she came there with poison on her breast, and she wanted to feed Krishna. And Lord Krishna took her breast and took out her life air, and she revealed herself as a huge, horrible rakshasi woman. So that when, was when Krishna was only a month or two old. And then Lord Krishna killed other demons like Aga and Baka and Trinavarta and Shaktasura, many different demons who were all sent by King Kamsa to kill all the little children in Braja. And Lord Krishna was killing them one after another. Because Lord Krishna's mission in this world is described in Bhagavad Gita. Paritranaya sadhunam vinas chaya chatuskrita. Lord Krishna comes to give pleasure to his devotees and to annihilate the miscreants. So it's not that Lord Krishna is only a killing god, but his real purpose in coming is to give pleasure to his devotees. And who are the devotees? Well, the devotees are particularly the people of Vrindavan or Braja. How many of you have been to Braja? Not so many. Okay. Many of you, Braja in Vrindavan is the land where Krishna performed his childhood Leela. If you go to Vrindavan, there are thousands of temples there. In fact, every building is a temple there in Vrindavan. Mathura is the Janmasta, right? The birthplace of Lord Krishna. So Lord Krishna appears in Mathura as the child of Vasudeva and Devaki, and then after, immediately after his birth, Vasudev takes Lord Krishna out and takes him across the Yamuna to the home of Nanda Maharaj. And there he takes the baby who was born to Mother Yashoda, who was a girl. So Vasudev brought back the girl to Mathura and left baby Krishna in the home of Nanda Maharaj. And that's how Krishna grew up in Vrindavan, just across the river, across the Yamuna from Mathura, is the land of Vrindavan, which 12 forests of Braja. And Lord Krishna enjoyed that wonderful land, Vrindavan. It, it's a very, very special abode. And Lord Krishna chose that place to enact all of his childhood lila. Later on, he grows up, goes to Mathura, then to Dwarka. But childhood, the best part of the life, was Lord Krishna's lila in Vrindavan. So we see Lord Krishna growing up in Vrindavan in the home of Nanda Maharaj. And Nanda Maharaj is a Vaishya. He has many cows. Nine like cows. Just earlier this evening, we were at another man's house. Very wealthy man. How many cows did he have? Ten, Ten cows. Ten cows. And Nanda Maharaj has 900,000 cows. So just imagine how wealthy Nanda Maharaj was. His wealth was in the cows. Today, people don't keep cows. They keep cars. 
and they, if they have petrol, they think they're wealthy. They're thinking petrol is more important than milk. <laughs> petrol ruins the life. Petrol pollutes the air, pollutes out everything. But milk, you drink milk, it gives you pious activity and prolongs the life. So everyone from childhood is brought up drinking milk. The young ch children, mother gives birth to the child, she will feed her milk to the child. And later on, she will give the milk of the cow to the child. So Lord Krishna grew up in Vrindavan drinking milk. He was drinking the milk of Mother Yashoda. His mother, she was breastfeeding Lord Krishna. But at the same time, Mother Yashoda is also thinking about caring for her son. This is the nature of the rasa, the relationship between Yashoda and Krishna. That Yashoda, Mother Yashoda, never thinks of Krishna as God. Rather, she is always thinking. He is my son. Mother always wants to protect her child. Mother will be saying, where is my child? What is my child doing? In this way, Mother Yashoda was thinking always about Lord Krishna. And she, was, she, she had some very nice cows and she was keeping these cows giving them special grass, sometimes feeding them lotus flowers. And in this way, the cows would give even better creamy milk, very fragrant. You know, some people say, oh, I don't like milk. I like Coca-Cola. Oh, you feel so sorry for that. Some people are so unfortunate, they've never even seen a cow. They think milk comes from a factory. So we need to appreciate more the Vedic culture. And part of the Vedic culture was taking care of the cows and protecting the cows. And to show this example, Lord Krishna himself appeared and spent his childhood, first uh, the first 11 years of his pastimes in this world, he spent in Vrindavan with Nanda Maharaj, taking care of the cows and going to the forest and enjoying in the Vrindavan forest with the cows. Everyone should learn. Everyone should try to pass some time working with the cow taking care of cows, feeding the cows, cleaning the cows. You know, they had, they had, uh, there was a case of, the, there was this prison and they had some very violent people in the prison, but they put them to work taking care of the cows. And you know, these people who were very violent and nasty, that in course of time, because they were taking care of the cows, they became humble and gentle. That is the effect of taking care of cows, being with the cow. Cow is also mother. So very, very important in society. We are trying to promote cow protection. Other places are promoting eat cows. We're saying protect the cow. You see, people don't care about cows, they care about dogs today. They have their dogs, protect their dogs. They don't care, they eat cows and protect the dogs. This is the unfortunate situation in this age of Kali, Kali Yuga. Okay, coming back to this Damodar Lila, Mother Yashoda 
is keeping nice cows for Lord Krishna, and she has some very special milk which she wants to give to her son. There were three reasons why Mother Yashoda was preparing this nice milk. One was she's a devotee, and the devotee will offer their milk to Krishna. They want to give nice milk for Lord Krishna, and they will offer that milk for the pleasure of Krishna, and then they will have prasad, offer the prasad to the, chi the child. So that was one reason. Another reason was because Mother Yashoda loves Krishna, her own child. She wants to care for him. And the third reason was that she worries about Lord Krishna going to the neighbor's house and stealing, stealing the butter. Lord Krishna may say, your butter's no good. Get better butter at the neighbor's house. I'm going to the neighbor's to get butter. So Mother Yashoda doesn't want that. She wants to have the very best milk to give to Lord Krishna. And in this way, she was having these cows. She was collecting the milk from them. At the same time, Lord Krishna is a child, and she has to feed him. When he's hungry, he will come to her. He wants food. He wants to drink her breast milk. And Mother Yashoda is obliged to pick up her son and feed him. So it happened on the Diwali day, on the very special Diwali day, Mother Yashoda was cooking milk when Lord Krishna came to her in a hungry mood. So Mother Yashoda picked up baby Krishna and fed her milk to him. But then she remembered she had milk on the stove. So she put down Lord Krishna and went to take care of the milk. It wasn't neglectful on her part. Rather, she wants to take care of the milk because the milk is meant to give to Krishna. She wants to give it to Krishna. But Lord Krishna, he is enacting the part of the normal child. And the normal child, when the mother puts him down, it doesn't satisfy him, then the child will cry and create a scene. Yeah. So Lord Krishna was ne feeling neglected that why my mother's taking care of that milk? She should take care of me. Why she's bothering about that milk, that stupid milk? She should be feeding me. So Lord Krishna picked up a stone and then broke the pot, which Mother Yashoda had been churning into butter. The pot was full of milk, which she was churning into butter. And Lord Krishna broke that pot and began to distribute the butter. He was eating some himself and giving some to the monkeys. So Lord Krishna is uh, quite aware that he's done something wrong. His mother's not going to be very happy. So he moved away from the scene of the crime. He went away to another place. At that time, Mother Yashoda came back and saw that her son had broken the pot. And she thought, how clever my son is. He's gone away. So he knows that I'd be angry with him. So he's gone away. So Mother Yashoda followed the butter footprints. And then she saw that Lord Krishna was sitting there with the monkeys having a butter feast. And when Lord Krishna saw his mother coming, then he realized he's in trouble and he got up and ran. And Mother Yashoda runs after him and they had a race. And Mother Yashoda was carrying a stick because she was using the stick to churn into butter. So Mother Yashoda is calling out, come back, come back. She said, I'm not coming back. You've got that stick in your hand. You're going to beat me. I'm not coming back. So like this, Lord Krishna was running away from Mother Yashoda. 
And Krishna, Mother Yashoda calls him a monkey. He said, then I'll go and live in the forest and find him a monkey. So this was another problem. Mother Yashoda, of course, she doesn't want Krishna to go and live in the forest. So that was when, after she caught him, she thought, I better tie him up because he may go away and live in the forest. And I don't want that. I don't want him to go off into the forest. And I don't want him to go to the neighbors either. So she got some rope and she began to try to tie him up. But Lord Krishna was using his magical powers. And every time Mother Yashoda brought the rope, the rope was never long enough. It was just never long enough to find out Lord Krishna. And she brought more rope and more rope and more, all the ropes of Vrindavan. And still it was just never enough to find out Krishna. And Mother Yashoda was just exasperated. Oh no, what is going on? What is happening? And she became very confused. So at that time, then Lord Krishna had compassion on her and he allowed her to tie him. Now it's interesting because that same morning, Mother Yashoda had dressed Krishna and she put a belt around Krishna's waist without any difficulty. But after he'd broken the pot, when Mother Yashoda wants to tie him up, the rope was never enough. So this is another leela which Lord Krishna is enacting to increase the devotion. Mother Yashoda is becoming more devoted to him. So we have to understand, we have to understand this pastime carefully. If we can if we can understand how Krishna is not an ordinary person, but he is the Supreme Lord, and he is enacting these loving dealings with his devotee, Yashoda. So this is the idea of the Dhammadar Lila, that Mother Yashoda is showing her pure devotion for Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna is being controlled by his devotees. Do you want to control Krishna? You have to develop your devotion. Right? With devotion, then you can conquer Krishna. Krishna is Ajita. He's unconquerable. No one could defeat him. But he's defeated by the pure love of his devotee. We see that devotion, for example, Arjuna was also devotee. Lord Krishna spoke Bhagavad Gita to him, because you are my devotee as well as my friend. Therefore, Krishna spoke Bhagavad Gita to Arjuna. And similarly, Lord Krishna was controlled by the love of Srimati Radharani. Radharani is the Latini Shakti, the pleasure potency of Lord Krishna. She gives pleasure to Krishna. And she also attracts Krishna. Although material world in the material world, we're all controlled by Cupid, but Lord Krishna is called Madan Mohan, that he conquers Cupid. But Srimati Radharani is called Madan Mohan Mohini, that she is the conqueror of Lord Krishna. She can attract Lord Krishna. And similarly, Mother Yashoda, Yashoda, one who brings fame. Mother Yashoda is one who brings fame. Why does she bring fame? Because of her devotion to Lord Krishna. Mother Yashoda just simply wants to protect Krishna, care for Krishna. And Lord Krishna, although he is the father, of all living entities, he's the Supreme Lord, he becomes controlled by Mother Yashoda. 
I was distributing literature one time over in Europe, and uh, I offered a book to a young man, and he said to me, he said, oh, Krishna, he said, I know Krishna cannot be God. He said to me, he said, Krishna has a father and mother. How could he be God? <laughs> and then he went on to say to me, Shiva is God. Shiva is light. <laughs> so then I said to him, well, where does the light come from? And he said, don't ask questions. Just listen. <laughs> he could not answer. We know from the Vedas that light also has an origin. So the origin of light is Lord Krishna. So we want to understand Krishna has a father and mother. Krishna enjoys having a relationship with his devotees. He sees all of us have our mother and father. We all have our mothers and fathers. Krishna thinks, why shouldn't I have a mother and father? Krishna wants to enjoy. And he enjoys having a mother and a father. The mother takes care of the son. Krishna enjoys this lila, this exchange of love with his devotee. So during this month of Kartik, we're remembering this auspicious pastime. Now it's very special that just simply taking part in this festival of Dhammadar. This is something which we don't just do one day, but we do it every day through the month of Dhammadar. Every day we want to worship Krishna. Now there's an interesting story which tells how there was this one man who was not a devotee. In fact, he was quite a sinful person. He maintained his living doing things like selling animal bones and animal skins and oh, you know, horrible dealings, you know, not pleasant business. He was quite a sinful person, but somehow he had come to a holy place during this month of Kartik. And during this month of Kartik, he saw all the different activities which were taking place, how people were doing puja and offering lamps everywhere, and people were chanting prayers and singing the songs about the pastime, and people were doing obeisances, bowing down and so on. So he had never seen people do any of these things before. And he was just looking at them, you know, just thinking, what are they doing, you know, he was watching, seeing them do all these things. So it, it came to the end of Kartik, the end of the month. End of the month, I think it's November 6th, 8th, number, number, November 8th, it's the end of the Kartik month. So on the end of the Kartik, on the final night, everyone was... It's a festival with that evening on the final night and people break their fast and they're finishing their vows. So everyone's in a happy mood and they were all celebrating. But what happened to this man, the sinful man, a big snake appeared and it bit this man. And it was a poison snake. So the man bit by the snake, he fell down. The devotees came, they tried to help him, but he died. And he, he was taken, the Yamaduras came and took him to Yamalok. Right? And Yamaraj was there, and he asked Chitragupta, so who is this man? And Chitragupta said to Yamaraj, he said, oh, he's a very sinful person. He never did anything good. So Yamaraj gave his judgment and said, send them Kumbi Pakaloka. Kumbi Pakaloka. You know that place? It's not a place you go for a vacation. 
It's one of the hells, Yamaloka. And in Kumbipakaloka, they have a big walk of boiling oil. And the sinful people are through, they're put into the boiling oil. You know, not physically, but the subtle body is put into the boiling oil. And in this way, you experience tremendous pain and you don't die. So this was to happen to this man. They took him to Kumbipakaloka and they threw him into the pot, the boiling oil. But immediately he contacted the oil. The oil all became cool. So all the Yamadutes there, they were very surprised. They said, whoa, what happened? We never saw anything like this before. So they immediately informed Yamaraj. And Yamaraj came there and he came along with Narada Muni. And Narada Muni told them, he said, you cannot punish this man. The Yamadurus were saying, no, he's a sinful man. He has to, has to be punished. But Narada Muni told them, he said, no, you don't know. This man, during the month of Kartik, he never did anything, but he watched the devotees do it. He watched all the people do their operates and their pujas, chant their prayers. So he got one sixth, one sixth of the benefit of all of their piety. So all of his sins were destroyed. So you cannot punish him. That's why the oil all became cool. So they were very surprised. They said, well, anyway, he's come here now. So we'll take him around. <laughs> and we'll show him, you know, what's available, what happens to people, bad people who come here. And after he went around, then Kubera came and they took him to the heavenly planets. He went up to Swargaloka and he became an assistant of Kubera. So that's a, an example which is told in Shastra about people who they don't even do anything, but they just see other people do it. They get one sixth of the benefit of their pious activity. So if you actually do it, you get much, you get all the benefit, you see, and you also give benefit to other people who see you do it. So even if your family members are not favorable and not inclined to do it, but if you do it, they will also get benefit from seeing you do it too. So this is one of the wonders about this month of Karti. Very, very special, right? Of all the months, this is the special month. This is also, this is the final month of the Chaturmasya, the four months of austerity. And it finishes with the last five days. There's an Ekadasi. The Ekadasi will be about no, November 2nd or 3rd. 3rd, the Ekadasi day, 4th. On oh, oh, the fourth, is it? Okay, it's so on the fourth. And so then the fourth to the eighth is what we, a period called Bhishma Panchak. And that's the end of the Chatur Masya and the end of the Dhammadar Brat. So it's very, very special, very powerful. You get a lot of blessings and you can give a lot of blessings to others also by observing some vows during this time. So we've all come here this evening, we've gathered here this evening. Our purpose is to also worship Lord Damodar. And we want you also to sing the Damodar Astika. It's a beautiful song, which we can give you. You can copy it or put it in your mobile phone. You can Keep it in your mobile phone and hear it and sing it and meditate on this wonderful pastime of Dhamma Dhamma. So are there any questions anybody has?
before we worship Lord Damodar. If anybody has any doubts or any comment or question, anything, please do. Well, the idea of the Bhisma Panchak is that somebody, you maybe you didn't observe Chaturmasya in any way, you didn't undergo any special vows during the Chaturmasya. So by observing the Bhisma Panchak, you can get the benefit of the whole Chaturmasya. And uh, the procedure is, but there are different levels of practicing Bhisma Panchak. Generally, people will just eat fruit and roots for five days. Yeah. Fruit and roots, see this is like Lord Rama in, in the forest in <laughs> Dandakaranya, Lord Ram, Sita and the Lakshman, they lived on fruits and roots. You know, for 14 years, they were there living on fruits and roots. So for five days, it's not a great astonishment, not very long. Yeah. You can manage on fruit and some roots. The idea is sense control. With sense control, regulate the eating, then you have more time for hearing and chanting. The real purpose of all of these things, like every ikadasi, it's not the fasting which is important. What is important is that we do more hearing and chanting. So this is the idea of the Bhisma Pancha also, that you will do more hearing and chanting. And this way, remembering Krishna. The whole point, the whole purpose is to increase our remembrance of Lord Krishna. Oh. 
Thank <laughs> you.